Yes, I'm in the temple town uh, here at Ayodhya, where Sri Ayodhya Dham is Ram May, so to speak, ladies and gentlemen. There are scores of people, so many people coming in by the seconds into the city just because they want to be here in this city uh, on the occasion of Pran Pratishtha. But we're going to go across to somebody who's not just a Padma Bhushan, but he is somebody who's... Uh, uh, an author, a spiritual teacher, a guide, somebody who's championed mindfulness, Sahaj Yoga, and the Sri Ramchandra mission. Everybody recognizes him as Daji. Kamlesh Patelji, Namaste. Thank you very, very much for your time. Daji, my first question namaste, how would you see Anandji, January namaste, 22nd? Anandji. Namaste. A memorable day, historical day. Uh, it's a grand day for all of us, for all. Humanity rather, it is not exclusive to Hindus or Ram Bhaktas, but this is something remarkable. People will remember for millennia. Who is Ram and what does Ram stand for and why so many years later, from the Treta Yuga to the Kali Yuga now, he still remains relevant, Daji? <laughs> well, Lord Rama, as you speak of Ayodhya, he stands out as a personality, not just as Avatara Purusha, but as a royal, noble king. And often we remember him as an ideal of what a son should be, what a husband can be, what a king can be, what a brother. You know, he is a combination of so many things. He is tender than the tenderest of flowers and st stronger than any Vajra that you can find. People always have this debate, was he there? <laughs> and things like that. But to me, he's a man of ideals, man of principle. And it is that character, it is that his, uh, his invincible character, at any cost he'll follow his principles. And that's, that's what matters today. And if you value and cherish, I think it will be better. It will be a better way of expressing our gratitude and dedication to his life. What are the values? You called him an avatara purusha, but also he is known as Maryada Purushottam. What are the values that we as Bharat and Bharatiya yes. uh, need to imbibe or learn? For example, uh, let's see, uh, in order to serve his countrymen, his role as a king, as a leader, he sacrificed his own personal life just to maintain harmony within the kingdom. That stands out the tallest of all, actually. Other things are there because a lot of people amongst us are also who uh, honor parents. That doesn't stand out that much. There is also blemish on him for um, abandoning his wife. But when you see the greater picture, he sacrificed his personal life for the sake of the country, to, in order to create harmony within the country. And I think that stands the tallest. Um, the next one is that he could embrace even his enemies. He said, if Vibhishana comes, I have to accept him, though he is Ravana's brother. And even if Ravana comes in front of me, I will embrace him and I will forgive him. So he, he is really a, a great guy, actually. This aspect of equipoise, can we use yoga, mindfulness to hmm. try and get to a state of equipoise? It's very easy. Once you have the meditative mind and especially when we meditate on the heart, we are able to dive deeper into ourselves. We touch superconscious state and we also touch our subconscious state. And because of this widening of consciousness, we remain equipoised. Um, equipoise is lost because of narrow-mindedness. Narrow-mindedness means you are not able to think generously. You are, you are having a single track mind. But when you have poised mind through meditation, you automatically imbibe those qualities and thoughts, intuition. You tap into the higher intuition because of the superconscious. When we talk of heartfulness way of meditation, yoga through heartfulness meditation, we use the technique called pranahuti. And because of this pranahuti, it nourishes our soul, our spirit. And because of that, our life really gets enriched. 
in, in just few seconds. And I often tell my friends, especially young, young sisters and brothers, that please uh, don't believe in me. You must dissect yoga. You must dissect religion and spirituality like a scientist. You must experiment with it and come to your own conclusion through your own personal experience. Let your heart become the laboratory and your own outcome, yourself, with the result of that experiment and see if you like your new product or not, your new version. Daji, final question, if I may. Uh, Jambavan was there to wake up Hanuman please, please. and brought out his consciousness. He woke, he realized his potential. Will this Pranapratishtha wake up Bharat? Do you see this, you know, allowing Bharat to wake up to its potential? Well, uh, there is a big difference between Pranahuti and Prana Pratishtha. Prana Pratishtha was in vogue in our country in Vedic times when Rishi could not go from village to village. So what they would do is install a statue and make it worshipable by transmitting their essence, their own achievements and infuse as an energy into that and that has a time limit also. And uh, it, it would sometimes last for 200 years, sometimes 300 years, depending upon who charges that. My Guruji also ended up charging few statues and made them worshipable. And you can feel that charge. And uh, Pranahuti is something dynamic which we offer in a heartfulness of meditation. You don't have to go to a place, but this Pranahuti can be experienced wherever you are. And that's a big difference between Prana Pratishtha and Pranahuti. And your question with Bharat change because of Prana Pratishtha? I don't think so. Because Prana Pratishtha, in order to, or Pranahuti to be effective, one has to open the heart. And people often go to such deities, not with the open heart, but to demand something. And also, out of greed, they all, I mean, very rarely you will find love for the sake of love of a God. And if that is really, really there, then he did not go anywhere, actually. Most often people worship because of greed and because of temptations or fear. This is the main, main thing that keeps people religious. It's very difficult to find even one a person who really truly craves for the ultimate. So, prana pratishtha, I don't think it will ever change. But in fact, people will be under this hallucination that prana pratishtha has been done and things will change and we relegate our responsibilities to gods. That will be a fallacy. Very well said. So you brought the rational to the emotional and made sense of this whole thing. It's important for us to uh, celebrate the Pran Pratishtha of our Ishta, but not forget that we ourselves are responsible for what we do. So Pran Pratishtha and Pranahuti, only someone like you could have explained it so simply and so lucidly. Daji, thank you so much. Such a pleasure and thank you so much for your time.